How much podcast editing is actually too much podcast editing? Let's answer that in today's video. Podcasting, training and development. Hey there, podcaster. My name is Ashan Man, radio broadcaster, podcaster, and a podcast producer. And today's video is brought to you, of course, by my essential equipment guide to starting a podcast. Maybe you are in the research phase of figuring out how to start a podcast, and you're still trying to figure out which equipment that you can get to start a podcast. Well, this guide's really going to help you out. The link for that is down in the description of this video. You can go ahead and check it out for yourself, or I'll leave a link or a button up here or something that flies out that will help you get on over there to download that guide. So in today's video, we are going to be talking all about how much podcast editing is too much podcast editing. And this is a question that comes up uh, in forums, whether it's in Reddit or it's on Facebook or it's online. And, you know, the, the answer to this is going to vary. And I'm going to give you the short answers to this here in a second. But I want to make it known to you that uh, today's video is really going to play into the upcoming videos or the subsequent videos that I have planned for you. So today's video is actually going to be the last video for at least about a month until I can actually create those subsequent videos. And the reason for that being is because uh, the production value that I want to create, uh, I'm not sure if it's much production value, but I want to make sure that I'm getting everything right, all the steps right in order. So you're going to start seeing more tutorials out of me in this channel, uh, and you're going to see pretty much how I create podcasts and how I do them. But I want to make sure that I am covering all of my bases so that you're not lost in those tutorials, because what I see on YouTube are typically tutorials that go way too fast. And I want to make sure that you understand the process and the philosophy of those. So uh, I'm not going to have any videos coming out for the next couple of weeks, but I will be into the production process. I will still be creating the Podcast Therapist podcast, so you can check that out. And uh, maybe I'll be giving some updates in the podcast about those video um those pieces of video that I'm going to be putting into production. So stay tuned. I promise I'm not going anywhere. I will be back after a few weeks once I get those videos ready and uploaded for you. Okay. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about the two different types of content that you're going to be editing. All right. So the two types that are, that exist are going to be the interview style podcast. And then what I like to call the journalism style podcast, or, or maybe you could, would call it the, um, the storytelling podcast. All right. And within these two types of podcasts, those are the types of recordings that you're doing. So I want to break down what those look like here for you uh, in this video. Okay. So first let's start with the interview style podcast. Now, typically the interview style podcast is going to have a lot of imperfections. All right. The imperfections can have a lot of filler words. The imperfections can have a lot of dead air space. The, there's just, it's an imperfect podcast. It's a one take Charlie is what I would like to call it. And it's really a podcast that is done in one take and uh, there isn't a whole lot of editing that needs to happen, especially if you're taking it from the philosophy of which I take it from, which is like doing live radio. It's like getting over here into the radio studio and doing live radio. You don't get extra takes when you're doing live radio. So I like to keep those imperfections inside of my podcast. Now, there are people out there that will say that keeping the imperfections in your podcast uh, is lazy and you're just lazy and not editing and you don't know how to use the editing software. That is not true. It just depends on your philosophy. It depends on what you want your listeners to hear, okay? So what I like to see from interview style podcasts is I like to see actually imperfections. Now, I'm not saying that the imperfections have to be really imperfect. I'm saying that if you're creating a podcast, you know how to present, you know how to, you know, dole out your information in the right structure, or maybe you're doing a podcast with multiple people and the conversation is flowing really, really well, then I would say, yeah, you're not going to have to do a whole lot of editing, but maybe there's going to be some editing that happens within that podcast. So just so you know, that's what that's going to look like. Then you're going to have the journalism style podcast where the podcast is more about storytelling. And this really is more geared towards the lines of, I guess you could say, uh, you know, it would sound like a story like radios for a radio from the 20s, the 1920s, or maybe it's NPR style. Maybe it's this American lifestyle podcast. And with those podcasts, those podcasts take a little bit longer to edit because it requires a lot of pre-production, actual in production time, in production time and of course, uh, post production time as well. So you're talking about people who have maybe a small team where they are recording audio for different parts of the story. And there is possibly 
a storyboard that goes along with that particular podcast. So this means that there's going to be uh, the usage of the DAR, the digital audio workstation, a lot more, but it's going to be uh, more involved. It's going to be involved in placing certain pieces of audio in a certain order or referring different pieces of audio from maybe previous podcasts or uh, other pieces of audio sources and incorporating them into your digital audio workstation so that you can create a story. Now, let's answer the question. How long does this typically take? How long does it take to create an interview style podcast? And how long does it take to create a, uh, a journalism style podcast? I shouldn't even say create. I should say edit. Well, short answer being I personally believe in my philosophy that it should only be taking you 20 to 30 minutes to edit up a podcast that is interview style podcast. I know that seems a little, un it might seem unrealistic to some people, but I don't see it as unrealistic because I've had students, they have done these types of podcasts and they have been able to go into my programs and be been able to say, oh, this is how you do this in Adobe Audition. Simple. That's how you do that. And so I create simple processes inside of my digital audio workstation so that I'm not having to work hours and hours and hours of time. The average time that people have said and have mentioned to me that it takes them to edit an hour long podcast takes them about six hours. And this kind of rings true whenever you go into certain forms. They say like, yeah, it takes me way too long to edit a podcast. And typically this is because they're taking out all of the filler words. They are taking out all of the dead air space. They are fixing all the little background noises. And to me, that is unnecessary. In fact, I feel as though there are podcasters and podcast editors out there that feel it's a rite of passage to be spending more time inside of the digital audio workstation than is necessary. And what we have to remember is that the DAW itself is a tool and the tool is meant to help you and aid you so that you don't have to spend as much time in the creation process. At, you know, as much as I would like to say that, yeah, spending as much time in the creation process is a good thing, I would say that the DAW is a tool and the tool is meant to cut down a lot of those manual uh, processes that we used to do here in radio where we actually had to wind tape and we had to use a razor blade and strip the tape and we had to tape everything back together. And that's how we edited back in the day. And that just does not exist. So if there was a simpler process back then, we would have taken it on, but there wasn't. And then digital uh, recording came along and that's when it got a little bit easier for us. So don't let it be a rite of passage for you, the podcast editor or the podcaster. You don't have to be spending hours and hours of time in your digital audio workstation. You should only be spending about 20 to 30 minutes. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't spend that amount of time in the actual application itself, learning how to use the process or learning how to use the program itself. You should spend time in those uh, in that in that program to learn how to use that application. So just keep that in mind. There is a difference. There's a difference in learning the application versus actually using the application. All right. So just remember that this is not an audio book. If you're doing an inter st interview style podcast, you are creating a podcast that sounds like radio. It's going to have imperfections. It's going to have background noises. It's going to have, um, you know, just, you know, might have a baby crying in the background. Just today when I was recording something, I heard the pool guy outside my window he was fixing something and making a loud banging noise. Did it inter interrupt me? Yeah. Did I stop? Yeah. But what I did, I was able to utilize the tools within the DAW to make the process easier in the post-production process. So it's something that I just really don't focus on too much. It just depends on your philosophy. Now, before we go into breaking down the journalistic editing that you would create for a journalism style or a storytelling podcast, I want to remind you that Buzzsprout is today's sponsor of this video. They are the podcast hosting service that I use to create podcasts and publish podcasts into different platforms and syndicate them all over the place. In fact, when I was uh, reached out by Buzzsprout to use the platform actually as a podcast hosting, I was a little skeptical until I got into the program itself and started learning all about how it makes the job so much easier. So as you see with this video, I talk about how you should be spending less time in actual programs and spending more time creating content. Buzzsprout does that just for you. In fact, they have everything listed out for you. If you are going to go ahead and publish a podcast, they have all the direction directories listed for you. What you need to do, the instructions are listed right there for you. It makes it so simple. They also have features such as transcription fields where you can put the full transcriptions of your podcast into their platform so that you can get discovered more by Google. And then of course you can't forget their dynamic ad tool that has been a huge lifesaver, not even a lifesaver, but it's just been a very cool feature where I can add sponsorships as a pre-roll 
into my podcast without actually baking it into the final podcasting product. I highly recommend that you check out Buzzsprout today. Give it a try for 90 days uh, for free at uh, buzzsprout.com. There is also a link on your screen or down in the description below so you can go ahead and check it on out. Lastly, let's go ahead and talk about this journalistic editing that you're going to have to face and come up against, all right? Now, when it comes down to this type of editing, it's a little more involved. And the people who create those podcasts that are, say, like This American Life, or maybe you're talking about a serial, something that is, has more journalistic integrity, it takes more time. And there's typically a team that goes into that. And there's typically scripts that go into that. And there's typically all kinds of elements that jump into the idea of creating storytelling podcasts. So you're going to spend a lot more time developing the story, and then you're going to be communicating between you and your editor, or maybe it's just you doing the podcast editing. You're going to be able to stitch this story together. It may take you maybe a day maybe take you uh, maybe takes you six hours I don't know what that looks like because it's really going to depend on the story so you have to kind of allot yourself that time and allow yourself what it might look like to edit out let's say 10 episodes maybe that is four weeks maybe that's 10 weeks of time I don't know what it could take it just depends on how you're developing the story I know that when I created a storytelling podcast I remember that it took me anywhere between four to six hours to edit up a 40 minute podcast, but it had a story to it. And I had to remember what the story arc was. So that's just something that you have to really think about with these types of podcasts. They have a lot of workflows within the DAW itself that they're playing with. So it's good to know those DAWs. And then of course, uh, ambient noise and background noise. They like to keep that ambient noise and background noise when it comes down to recordings in the field. So they'll keep the ambient noise back there. But if it comes to something that is within a studio, they like to make the studio sound as clean as possible. It really depends. And of course, all they're looking for is developing and publishing the content itself. They'll keep things like pregnant pauses inside their podcast, and they might even uh, take sound clips from something that's on location. So you really have to think about how much time it's gonna take to not only record, but to edit and gather all that sound and figure out actually a file uh, ordering system within your computer to know where you can find those sounds. A great example of this type of podcast that is maybe away from the uh, This American Life type podcast would be the Marketplace podcast. This is a news program podcast that you can hear daily. And then, of course, they have reporters that go out into the field and you can hear that style of reporting and storytelling within those podcasts whenever they're telling a story that is about, say, farming in the Midwest and how COVID might have impacted uh, farming and the industry itself. I would recommend you check out their podcast to see how those are structured. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell notification so you can get notified when I drop a brand new video. That's going to come in very handy when I do come back from my break. Uh, it'll actually kind of be nice to not post a video to YouTube, but I figure you guys should know what is going to be going on. I do have plenty of content that I have lined up for you. In fact, I think I've written down at least 20 solid content ideas that are ready to go, that are ready to be uh, recorded and published for you. I wouldn't say published, but recorded and produced so I can produce them for you and share them with you because I think they'll really help you out if you're struggling with your podcast editing and recording itself. So in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure that you leave a comment down in the section below and tell me, how are you editing your podcast? Do you like to leave in all the imperfections or do you like to uh, spend more time in your digital audio workstation? What is the process that works for you? Because what you tell me in the comment section not only tells me what I should be looking out for and how I can help you, but it will help some other podcaster who comes upon this particular video. So thank you so much for watching this week. I really appreciate it. And we'll be talking to you here real soon. Take care.